The concept of longevity suggests a future where aging is no longer an inevitable decline, but something that can be managed, slowed, or even reversed. We've seen this idea in many Hollywood movies, but could it really become a reality? See, you're already healing faster. You're gonna do great. So you good guys or bad guys? Depends on the century. So we really never die. Just because we keep living doesn't mean we stop hurting. <laughs> Can AI help us live forever? Popular futurist Ray Kurzweil proclaims that such an unimaginable time is as close as 2030. At the end of this decade, as we go into the 2030s, we're going to achieve a new milestone. It's called longevity escape velocity. Yeah, I think that artificial intelligence will give us the key to, to genetic immortality. Immortality is possible. Actually, it already exists. Can AI help us achieve longevity technology? The dream of being immortal is as old as humanity itself. From the 4,000-year-old epic of Gilgamesh to today's advancements in artificial intelligence, the more impossible it seems, the harder we strive to make it a reality. Scientists have already conducted experiments where they successfully reversed the age of living cells. For example, Shinya Yamanaka, a Japanese researcher, won the Nobel Prize in 2012 for his discovery of four Yamanaka genes. According to him, by changing four genes, you can make older cells young again. However, the biggest technology that everyone is placing their hopes on is artificial intelligence. So I think there's going to be remarkable breakthroughs, breakthroughs that we haven't even dreamed about because of the role and, and the tools that AI give us. We want to live as long as possible, maybe a thousand years. Now, for the first time, I mean, we have a scientific, technological possibility. Is longevity technology possible in the next five years through AI? It's going to get faster and faster. And as we get to the early 2030s, let's say between 2029 and 2035, depending on how diligent you are, uh, you're going to get back a full year. So you lose a year, you get back a year, you might call him a crazy guy, but here is what Bill Gates had to say about him. The best person I know at predicting the future of artificial intelligence. In 1990, Kurzweil accurately predicted that AI would beat the best human player at chess before the turn of the millennium. Then in 1999, he forecast that by 2029, computers would match human intelligence in every domain. At the time, leading researchers like Jeffrey Hinton and Yoshua Bengio thought it would take much longer. But it turns out Ray was right when no one was ready to believe him. Could something like this happen now too? Experts like Dr. Pinchas Cohen say, death isn't optional, it's written into our genes. He also claims there's absolutely no evidence that it's possible. They say that even if a human becomes immortal hypothetically, there is a list of philosophical and existential questions that remain unanswered. In reality, we aren't sure about anything, and the real question isn't about when this will happen, but how it will happen. Which type of immortality would you like? Number 1. Digital Immortality According to some extropian futurists like Moravec and Kurzweil, due to exponential progress in computer technology, it will someday be possible to upload human consciousness onto a computer system, where it can exist forever. Predictions suggest such technology could emerge by 2045. Number 2. Cyborg Immortality This form merges human biology with technology, like replacing body parts with mechanical components. Remember the Marvel hero Bucky Barnes? Here are some technologies that contribute to this vision. Neuralink founded by none other than Elon Musk, develops brain-computer interfaces. It enables direct communication between the brain and the computer through a small chip. Uh, we put a, a chip in your brain to control your mind. Tetraplegics, tetraplegics, and, and people who have just, for whatever reason, uh, no longer have a connection between, or have a, a, a limited connection between their, 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 their brain and their body. Mm -hmm. um, and then... The second application would be restoration of eyesight. So if somebody's uh, gone completely blind, maybe even has lost the optic nerve, 
innovations in 3D printing and tissue engineering are creating synthetic organs. Such organs can replace the biological ones in case they are damaged. Nanotechnology and robotics will give birth to age-reversing nanobots. These tiny nanobots will constantly keep fixing damaged tissues within our bodies that start to deteriorate as we age. So nanobots is the way you achieve high bandwidth. How much intelligence would those nanobots have? Yeah, they don't need a lot. Uh, just enough to basically establish a communication channel to one nanobot, so. So it's primarily about communication. Yeah. Between external computing devices and our biological thinking machine. Number three, biological immortality. This refers to an organism's ability to avoid aging and maintain cellular function indefinitely. David Sinclair, a leading longevity expert, has developed an aging clock that can potentially reverse cellular aging. And that's not just for somebody who's born today who will live definitely into the 22nd century where the technologies that they'll have, we can barely even imagine. Even 10 years from now, we can barely imagine. But those of us who were born in the 1960s, like I was, 1970s, 80s, and even those who are now in, just in their 20s, will benefit from this real major advance that I'm gonna tell you about. Jeff Bezos has invested heavily in Altos Labs, which are focused on different processes that help in age reversing. Peter Thiel has also funded Unity Biotechnology and the Methuselah Foundation. Both of these companies are aimed at extending healthy lifespan and combating aging. More technologies that can potentially help us live forever or for a long, long time include genetic engineering, regenerative medicine, and cryonics. What if you missed it? Cryonics is a fascinating technology, especially for those who aren't sure if any technology will save them within their lifetimes. It involves preserving the bodies of deceased individuals at very low temperatures, with the hope that future advancements may allow for their revival. Now it might sound absurd, but prominent figures like Ray Kurzweil himself, Peter Thiel, and many others have already signed up for cryopreservation with different companies. What happens next? One thing is sure, there will certainly be an increase in the average lifespan and health span of human beings. It is widely believed that the first person to live forever has probably already been born. Someone who's 50 today, uh, staying in good health through 70, is likely to intercept all the breakthroughs mm -hmm. that will give them an additional 30 years at a minimum. Isn't that incredible? But during that additional 30 years, we then have all these other breakthroughs coming. You know? According to Jose Cordero, humanity only exists today because chimpanzees evolved into something more over the eons, and so we shouldn't be frightened of taking the next step. So, what's your perspective on this? Which of these potential methods of immortality do you think stands the greatest chance of becoming a reality?